Hey everybody, this is Paul. In this video I'm going to show you how to use visual block mode in Vim. So here I'm in a directory called vblockmode and if I type ls in here I can see that the only thing in this folder is a file called visualblock.cpp. So let's go ahead and open this in Vim. Most setups you can enter the vi to open a file in Vim. In some cases you'll actually have to put the m there but in my case I can just type vi so I'm going to do it that way and I'm just going to type the first letter and since this is the only file in here I'm just going to push the tab key and then it will auto complete the name of the file for me. So let's go ahead and open this file in Vim. So I've got a simple C++ program here. I'm including the IOStream library so I can do some printing to the terminal. I'm including the string library so I can use the string class here using the standard namespace so that I don't have to type the letters STD in front of all these C outs here. And then I've created this struct and I'm naming this struct frog. And so we're basically defining a type here. We're saying okay if I type the word frog that means I'm defining something that contains a name, it has a color, it has a fur type, which I know doesn't make sense for a frog, but that's what we're doing right now. And a frog also has an age, and then it has this function here called print info, and it just prints the information that the frog contains. It prints its name, its color, its fur, and its age. So now if we go down here and take a look at our main program, here we're creating a frog, we're naming it Hoppy, and we're giving Hoppy a name. We're saying, okay, Hoppy's name is Hoppy, Hoppy is brown, Hoppy has fuzzy fur, and Hoppy is two. And then we call the print info method to print Hoppy's information. So that all makes sense except for we're defining a frog and frogs really don't have fur. So this is actually a situation that comes up fairly common when you're writing code and you start looking at stuff like this and you're like, you know what, actually, this doesn't really look like a frog to me. This actually looks more like a dog type. So let's say, okay, we just made a mistake. This was actually supposed to be a dog. So let's go ahead and rename this struct to dog. And in Vim, I'm going to put my cursor here and I'm going to enter the I key to put me into insert mode. And then I can go ahead and delete the word frog and I'm going to make this a dog struct. And so now this makes more sense. Dogs have a name, they have a color, they have a fur type, and they have an age. So that's cool. So now let's go down here and then in our main program, rather than frog here, we'll just change this to dog. So now we've got a dog and his name is Hoppy. Well, let's give him a different name since he's a dog instead of a frog. So we're gonna name our dog Fido. And then we'll set Fido's name to Fido, of course. And then this part right here is where I want to show you the visual block mode trick. So let's say we've got this whole list of things that we're setting right here, and we'd like to change these really quickly. So I'm in insert mode right now. I'm going to push the escape key to exit insert mode. And then I'm going to enter control V and that will put me in visual block mode. And now I can highlight an entire column. So if I go down, you can see I've highlighted all the H's here. And then if I go over to the right, I've highlighted every instance of Hoppy. So just to be clear, I'm going to push escape. And if I just type V, that puts me in visual mode. And see visual mode will highlight the entire line as I go down. So pushing escape again, and then control V puts me in visual block mode, and I can just highlight the column I want. So with the column highlighted in visual block mode, I'm just going to push X to cut all that out and then I'll do another control V to put myself back into visual block mode. I'm going to push the down arrow to highlight this column and in some installations of Vim you may actually have to use the J key to go down when you're in visual block mode and so now I'm just going to type shift I to put myself in insert mode and now I'm going to rename each of these to Fido by typing in Fido on the first line and then pressing the escape key and that will automatically fill in the entire column with my change. So now I'm going to save this file by typing colon WQ. So now we're back at our terminal here. So let's go ahead and compile this and make sure everything looks good. So we'll do G++ and we're just going to tab that V over and then we'll name our executable with the minus O flag and we'll call our executable Fido. So pushing enter now, our program compiles, we type ls, we can now see we've got this Fido executable. Let's go ahead and do dot forward slash Fido to run our program. And it says we're printing info, so we're printing the name Fido, he's brown, he's fuzzy, and he's two years old. So anyway, that was a simple example of how you can use visual block mode in the Vim editor. So hopefully that helps you guys in your programming endeavors. So thank you guys for watching, have an excellent day, and if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe.